Coming up on the FTC Open Alliance Show. 12736 Electric Mayhem Green is on to talk about some of their incredible advancements that they've made for their Into the Deep robot. From their polycarb base to multi-stage intake, scoring system, and stage three climber, this team is really on the right track to get ready for their first competition coming up soon. So let's get ready for the FTC Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com slash Robits to learn more in order today. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. And welcome back. Once again, 12736 Electric Mayhem Green. And wow, the progress that you all have been making has been absolutely incredible. Hopefully you've been following them on their Chief Delphi build blog. They've been doing some really cool stuff. They had a great stream this past weekend as well, too. So make sure you check out all the stuff they have going on. We got Oscar and Nate joining us today. So guys, introduce yourselves once again. And let's hop right into all the amazing things you're doing. Yeah, thank you. My name's Oscar. This is Nate. We have Hamid helping out behind the camera. Um, and we have some really exciting stuff to show you guys today. So um, turning first to the drivetrain, um, we've chosen again to use a Kiwi Drive, which is the three motors uh, driving Omni wheels. Um, and we picked this because we really like the speed and versatility it gave us in past years. And we thought that would mesh well with our robot this year, as well as the game um, layout. Uh, one feature um, of this design is uh, our electronics layer here, which houses importance uh, pieces of the electronic system, like the battery and the octo-quad, and as well as the, uh, the motor mounts um, during the motors to drive the wheels. And turning it over to the, Nate for the... Yeah, up next I'm going to talk about uh, just kind of the uh, path that the uh, samples take through a robot uh, when we are scoring. Yep. And uh, the first thing, the first part of uh, uh, robots Oh, the samples path is our intake system right here. We've got, um, the first time we were on the show, we had a over the sample rotor intake, which we are uh, since pivoted from because uh, the pressure of the wheel pressing the uh, sample into the uh, mat was too much and we weren't getting uh, the intaking speed that we were looking for. Uh, so we went back to our original design of two counter rotating uh, side rollers, uh, which Hamid, do you wanna get those turned on? Uh, and these, this seat, these sit on a 250 millimeter uh, swift slide that comes into the uh, submersible zone and intakes, uh, and then pulls the sample back into the robot. Um, we also have a color sensor on our intake, um, so we can choose what color block we are trying to intake. And if we uh, intake the wrong color, it will actually go out the back of the intake. Uh, so it's out of our way when we try to reattempt the intake and so that it's harder for the uh, opposing alliance to pick up that block. Yeah, can you get that turned on? So that was um, the sample getting input. And then the system we have behind it, this is, uh, this is our carriage system. This sits on uh, the two 350 millimeter whip slides we have. And this is what we use to score in the basket. Uh, so once the block, uh, once a, the block is into, into the robot, uh, it is transferred and handed off to uh, the carriage system. And the carriage system can either choose to uh, outtake the block further into the robot uh, so that we can uh, dump it into the human player zone to turn it into a specimen for scoring on the chamber, or it can um, keep the block in itself and rise up the uh, outtake into the basket. Do you want to show that up one more time? So, uh, when the when everything is retracted into the robot, it all sits nicely in the handoff, uh, and it just hands off to each other. All right. Yep. Uh, so intake servos, yep. and then handoff. And the block comes out right close to that of the robot, which is that here. And then when the whole system sits uh, in the robot, um, yeah. The intake sits in the robot here, like that, and this sits, and the carriage system sits 
attached to the 350 millimeter swift slides there. So uh, hands off into the robot and uh, the carriage can ride up on these slides here, which we also use for climbing, or it can outkick, uh, the back, outkick out the back of the robot. Uh, and when we outtake out the back of the robot, that's so that the human player can uh, put a clip on, turning it into a specimen, which then uh, our grabber system, which Oscar will tell you about, uh, uses the score in the chamber. So I kind of showcased the grabber system last week, but there have been some notable changes. Um, probably most striking is um, the addition of another half mirrored across the center plane. Um, so we just took the one side and added another um, on the other side um, to make it so that we could intake or outtake from whichever ever side of the robot we wanted to in a match. Um, another another change was um, the we decided not to use TPU because it wasn't as compliant as we wanted. Um, so we purchased some silicone mold and made a made a three D printed um, of the actual. Um, Grabbers, which was just a Boolean subtraction, and we made a silicone mold of it, and they came out really well, um, and they're very compliant and nice and grippy as well. Um, another thing we did was to remove the servo, um, instead of opting for a more passive intaking system. Um, this would this would allow the the intake to be very quick and um, and easy for us to do. There are a few challenges of this that we have to work out though. Um, right now it's the outtake isn't as clean as we want it and we have to work on the, the drivers a little bit more on that, but it's coming along very well. Um, they ride up they ride up on these on these other swift slides um, all the way up to to the scoring height, um, and that that these are fast and nimble and really allow us to um, quickly and accurately get to get to those heights. Um, but while they're on the ground, they can they can intake from the side of the robot, um, being out close enough out of the side of the robot to grab on to the the specimen from the walls. Um, then our climb. The back of the robot has these two hooks um, also attached to the, the main slides. Um, and these will go up. They will first hook on to the first layer um, and drive themselves all the way down. After that's complete, this servo here and mirrored on this side will pull a pin from this, this hook, which is spring loaded. So it will come up and interact with the hook. Um, and these will hold the robot so that this, these, the main hooks can accurately climb up to the um, second rung. And we can climb for uh, the full points from there. So that's, that's a general overview uh, of our robot. We focused a lot on being able to climb early on in the season for our first match and uh, being able to have a very versatile uh, intake and driving system. Uh, and we're very happy with where the robot is uh, so far, and we're looking forward to competing uh, in December with uh, this machine. So you guys have made some incredible progress. I definitely have some questions I'd like to get some clarity on because there's some great things going on here. I want to start off with your drive base on there, talking about, you know, you always need like a, a polycarb for essentially your drive base structure, right? What made you go that direction for things versus we see so many teams using the aluminum base structure kits, that sort of thing. Talk to me about like, you know, did you do any stress testing or crash testing really to make sure that that's going to hold up? Yeah, we're, we're lucky enough to have a CNC router in our lab, um, which gives us access to um, incredibly bespoke uh, polycarb pieces um, that we can really uh, shape to our specific needs. Um, and we've, we've for a while been doing um, polycarb plates for, for our drive trains and for our electronics layers. And um, if, if, if they're supported well enough with spacers and um, threaded rods or stuff like that, 
Um, we haven't really seen any problems with uh, structural integrity, um, which is is really nice because we can we can have so much control over the parts that we manufacture for ourselves. No, that's that's really cool, and and it's awesome you have those resources available to be able to test and make different things. And I know last time we had you on, you know, you you cat out everything now, and we were talking earlier on the show that you know how important it's been for your team to cat everything out ahead of time, and how far have you been because of that? Is that something you find yourself doing in future years too? So in the past, um, our mentality has been a lot of we're under a pretty strict time limit, so we need to cat and build at the same time just to get the robot done as quickly as possible. Uh, and this has actually led to us uh, having having to redesign and iterate uh, physically on the robot, which is a very expensive pro uh, process and takes a lot of time. Uh, but this year, we decided to go with a more um, CAD first and spend a lot of time CADing and iterating uh, in design software. Uh, so that way that we don't have to spend nearly as much time iterating uh, on physical um, systems. Uh, and this has uh, worked out great. Uh, we spent all of September and October uh, catting the robot, uh, and we found uh, we had nearly weekly uh, design review meetings. Uh, and through this, we found a lot of issues uh, that we were able to solve in CAD uh, very quickly. Um, and then come uh, build weekend, which was uh, last weekend, uh, where we came in over the weekend to build the robot in its uh, in almost in its entirety, uh, we had a lot more integration issues because all of those uh, sorts of integration and spacing issues we figured out um, in CAD um, like weeks ago. So the robot came together much quicker. This is the most robot we've ever had uh, at this point in an FTC season. Well, in, that's uh, definitely quite, encouraging quite to hear that you've been able to make that progress and it's been working out so well for you. Uh, I want to go to your, uh, your scoring system here. How does the transfer actually work between your intake and that silicon mold, mold that you have, uh, what does like the pathing look like between that? Can you kind of give, give us a little bit more uh, in depth on how it's actually getting to your scoring system? So when the block comes out, um, so the block travels uh, through the intake, through the carriage, um, and then out the back of the robot through another set of wheels, which we haven't actually installed yet. Uh, and then it just kind of drops off the back of the robot into the human player station, where the human player will then uh, pick the block up once the robot's out of the way. Uh, and put the clip on uh, and then uh, the human player will hang the clip on the wall and as long as the human player's hand doesn't break the plane of the field you can actually slide that clip along the wall which makes lining it up uh, to the robot's uh, grabber system really easy uh, and then the grabber just passively grabs onto it and then you can go score so for your team are you only then scoring uh, specimen or are you looking at also scoring samples potentially too uh, we are focusing uh, primarily on specimen, uh, especially high chamber specimens, because uh, it's worth more points. But the carriage system also rides up on the slides, uh, and by driving under the basket, the carriage can also outtake into the uh, into the outtake samples into the basket. But we don't intend to focus on that nearly as much. So, how did you figure out like what that padding actually looked like? I mean, obviously, you did a lot of that in CAD and stuff, but like, what were some of the processes to getting to where you are now? And was there anything that you know maybe you like, hey, we tried this, it didn't work out, that sort of thing? Uh, one of the original designs was to not actually to have uh, the grabber system, which Oscar designed, on a pivot in the um, uh, in this motion. So instead of uh, the block. Uh, coming all the way through the robot and out the back of the robot, it would actually get picked up in the robot. Uh, and we thought that was uh, much too complicated and not nearly as necessary. Uh, and it was much easier for just the uh, block to come out of the robot into the human player station. And the human player puts the clip on, and then the human player basically does that complicated handoff for us uh, by hanging it on the wall for the robot to outtake, uh, for the robot to intake which makes it um, a much more simpler design and removes a lot of like lining up issues and handoff issues, which we've had in the past with handoffs. Well, 12736, uh, this is phenomenal progress. Thank you so much uh, for sharing everything you've been doing so far. Once again, make sure you go check out their uh, Chief Delphi uh, build blog they're doing. You can also find it on the FTC Open Alliance website as well, too. We got it up here on screen. Uh, they're doing streams as well, too. So it makes you tune into all the great content that they are making as well uh, for what they're doing. Guys, best of luck to you. I mean, it's going to be so cool to see your team compete uh, and see that progress on it. So we can't wait to see how you do, and, and good luck with the rest of your build. Thank you very much. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. 
Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com slash Robits to learn more in order today.